Okay, what we have here is we're dealing with the primers. Whenever you're dealing with primers, the thing that we stand it, that we buy is the Rust-Oleum Brown Primer. Every now and then you're going to get lucky to have Rust-Oleum Gray. For black firescapes, try to buy gray primer. Like for example, here's a gray primer. And it's, look how dark that is compared to black. So if you can get your uh, white based primers, which we're going to show you now, you can get as close to dark gray as possible. That's going to work out. So uh, a lot of times instead of red, you go to dark gray. We've also utilized flat black uh, paint here, which they, uh, I'm trying to get a can of flat black. Um, sometimes they sell it here. Flat black, here it is. And these cans are 97 cents a piece. These flat blacks are great primers. The reason why paint doesn't adhere to, uh, to other paint is because it's got shiny on it. So if you put it, if you spray with shiny paint a job and then you try to paint over it, the new paint will not adhere to the shiny paint below, but it will adhere to flat primer. So anything without the gloss, other paint will usually adhere to. So this is a great primer. It's flat black paint. If you can't find flat black paint, then try to use on black fire escapes um, gray primer and if you can find it and it's usually available dark dark gray primer now this allows you to get the job done it looks great in case you miss a spot or two on the final paint job this is what they see black against a dark gray it'll it'll get you by it's not recommended uh, that you use that as a cheating but it'll help in, in certain situations okay now We've also bought all these other all these other paints in case you're painting a fire escape. Always try to match the fire escape to one of these colors. So today we happen to be painting a fire escape that this almond is the color of the fire escape. So what we've done is also now we need to get our primers, which on the fire escape now is a lot of reds. But what we want to go there now and do is start spotting all the rest of the fire escape back to a primer, but that's this color. So instead of spending a lot of money on these primers, uh, which sometimes they have, sometimes they don't have, but we, we were able to find just the spray, which is the, what we call the finished spray. What we have to do is come here and find kills. So you come and get a kills, and you try to find the kills that has the, it's the uh, exterior, interior, exterior, oil-based. And where are they? Was it here? Yeah. Okay, so it's a primer sealer interior exterior oil, oil base kills complete white pigmented now the beauty thing about the the white pigment the reason why kills works so white has an extra amount of white pigment meaning kills is, is made so that when you put it over a white wall and it has uh, stains from roof damage from water damage it's very difficult to kill with this normal primer you probably have to do three coats four coats of regular primer to kill a water stain you come in there with kills because it has so much white pigment. As soon as you roll it over this, it kills you know anything that's down below, so you can put the, the final coat over it. So we were able to come here and get um, them to basically stain the kills to the, the base color we want. So we gave him the can of almond. He matched it and he made the kills, and he already gave us the, the cans. And here they are. He already gave us the kills, matching color, and this is our primer. So now we're going to go through the whole fire escape and priming already with the final color. So when we go back and paint the final color, in case we miss the littlest bit of anything on this fire escape, the primer is already there in the color. Whereas if it was red and we missed a little bit, we'd see that red. It'd be a dark blemish. So in certain situations, when the owner's doing the final walkthrough, you know what I'm saying? Don't forget, we're going to be doing 10-year coverage of a lot of this, so you're going to be able to go back and finish. Um, um, some of these things in years to come. The, the, the difference between closing a job and finishing a job sometimes is this little blemish, you know, 10 feet in the air. If it's already the color of the fire escape, it's gonna go, it's gonna pass as a paint job. So that's the important thing here. So if you look at all the things that we have, we have the sprays. So when we're finished painting the fire escape, the guy who's the final painter is not only brushing it, painting it, but on the awkward situations, he's gonna be spraying. Because we're gonna roll the paint job with the rollers. We're going to stab the paint job and paint it by hand. And then the final one is, okay, there's an awkward situation 
where you need nothing but spray. Here's the matching colored gloss already in you. Done. So only a few guys know how to do all three steps. The sausage rollers for what we call rough painters. They just push paint. A finished painter works with the rolling. He comes in with a brush and he tightens it all up and he sprays. That's a finished painter. And then the final painter is the guy with the caulking gun. He rolls paint. He finishes all the touch-up, makes sure that he uses tape so not to damage the building. And then he also caulks it all around. It's perfect. That's the three levels of painters that we're going to train as we go along. But the key, the key to today is this is a supply of all the things needed for a paint job. The key is um, the paint. Let me tell you about this other thing here. This is a can. We're buying this can just so that, because uh, you can always have plenty of empty cans, plenty. But we're buying this fresh can today so that I'm going to teach you guys what happens at the end of every paint job. Some techniques is you take a, you take a, a roller, a sausage roller like this, you pull it off and you, you put it in a plastic bag, you wrap it up as much as you can, you stick it somewhere, the next day you pull it out and you stick it back on and you start rolling. You gotta be careful that a lot of guys in these buckets, they leave these buckets dirty. And what they're supposed to do with these buckets at the end of a job is they're supposed to take a paintbrush and wipe out all the excess paint back into a can with these paintbrushes. Squeeze out all the excess paint off of these rollers. Then once you pull this roller off and this off, all you have to do is you take one of these rollers, or four or six of them, and you throw them in here. And you take the paintbrushes, you throw them in, in there with them and you only put in about a quarter inch to half inch of, of uh, thinner in the bottom of this can. You don't fill it, quarter inch to half inch of thinner. Once you've got this thing filled with that day's uh, paint brushes and rollers, close it, seal it, smash it, shake it upside down, and then leave it with all the sausage rollers and all the things touching the bottom. It'll constantly soak up all night. The, the paint and keep them wet. The next day or a week later, you pop this airtight seal and there all those paintbrushes are still going. So now you don't throw paintbrushes away at the end of a job. You throw them into this and they have life. A month, you won't be buying paintbrushes because you'll have some dirty black paintbrushes ready to go. Mainly just the first thing in the morning uh, when you're opening them up, you have to get in there with some plastic gloves because usually the handles are all soaked um, and all you do is clean them up. As soon as, you, as soon as you clean up the, the paintbrush handles, everything is ready to go. And that's why we have plastic gloves and everything for us to do our job. So, a lot of techniques are going to be discussed uh, while we're here in Dallas. And that was just some of them. Uh, and again, one of the things you got to do uh, when you're watching this video, you have to watch five minutes, stop, take our sheets, answer all the questions on the sheets, what you found right, what you found wrong, what was knowledge, to write it down as knowledge base for your book and what questions you may have. If you found anything uh, out of the ordinary or if any insights came in that you want to bring up, that's what this is the time to write it down and say this was uh, something new or something old. Um, and if you have a different way of what we're doing here, suggest it. So if you see something that we're doing and you somehow come up with a better version of the same idea, this is when you want to write it down and suggest it to your supervisor.